All right, everybody, we are here at a Dodge Caliber. We are getting a code for the intake manifold runner, the little flapper that moves around when you accelerate. Usually under hard acceleration, it comes on in this car, pings the check engine light. Uh, nothing really happens. It's just real sluggish on power. And we noticed we had a valve cover gasket leak, so we're going to change that while we're in here as well. So the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and remove these battery access clips and slide this whole thing out of here. Go ahead and disconnect your battery and take it out. Well, you don't actually, you don't have to take it out. You can just disconnect it. All right, the battery post was 10 millimeters. It might be different for yours, but we just took them and set them down in there. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and get rid of this snorkel here. Take this sensor off and most of these little sensors here actually all of them have a sliding lock tab of some sort so you slide it back and then you can remove it and the same thing goes for the fuel injectors these ones just slide up and down go ahead and take out all the wiring up here set it aside take this wiring out take this tube out because you want access to this the throttle body's down there and you're going to need to disconnect this as well all right at this point we have removed the front half of the air box and the intake snorkel going down to the throttle body down there you can see it i know it's a little dark there it is and it's got some gunk in there quarter million miles worth of built up oil we'll get that cleaned out i'm sure this thing will run amazing afterwards and the part in question is right here this little motor so you don't have to take this off to get the manifold off it can come off as one unit if you were gonna just try and change this which we don't recommend because Usually, if the motor's bad, there's some gunk inside the manifold. Buy it all as one unit. We're just going to take this off and see what's going on in there, if something's broken or not, before we rip the whole manifold off. All right, we got the little motor off. And down inside there, we tried turning it by hand, and we could not. We stuck a flathead screwdriver in there and finally got it popped free. Uh, it felt very gunky in there, so that's probably what it was. This thing got stuck and burned the motor up. And that's why we say replace the entire manifold assembly. Because that thing is probably loaded with carbon. So when we take it off, we'll take a look at it. But we're going to continue on now. The next big thing we got to get out of the way is probably the fuel rail here. And we got to get a couple of these vacuum hoses pulled off. All right, so what we did here was we disconnected the fuel line at the quick disconnect. We squeezed the green tabs together and slid it off. It's pretty easy. We disconnected all the injector harness clips and took out the PCV hose and a few of those sensors on the head there. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it does make things easier for access and clarity. So with all that slung back on the top of the valve cover there, you have clear access down and we believe those are 12 or 13 millimeter bolt heads and there's five of them so we follow into all the holes take the dipstick out and then this whole thing should slide off down here we just pulled off the brake booster line and another vacuum line that was on the throttle body and the map sensor which was right there so now we're going to just loosen up all these five bolts and everything should slide out all right, we got the intake manifold off. Some things to note, this was hanging us up as well. There's the five manifold bolts and this bracket that bolts onto the engine. Those are all uh, 13 or half inch. We left the brake booster line on there and we'll just transfer it over and put it back in as an assembly. So you want to put everything the way you took it off back on. Quarter million miles, not bad. Had some cross leakage, as you can see with the oil. Not too bad, though. The valves look good in there. Everything, surprisingly, looks good. So we'll clean everything up. We did end up taking out one of those phase sensors that were right there. Just, again, to make room for everything. It slid out very easily. We took this coolant hose off the bracket right there. So, yeah, we're going to get everything cleaned up. We'll take the coils out and replace the valve cover gasket while we're in there and get everything put back together. All right, once you have the area cleaned up, as you can see, it's nice and clean. Get the gasket mating area as clean as possible. 
transfer everything from the old manifold onto the new manifold. Again, you can leave the fuel rail off for now. We're just gonna go ahead and set it back in there and get everything hooked back up. All right, once you got the intake manifold back in, go ahead and torque everything down. Also, leave the throttle body loose when you're putting it on because that little bracket, black bracket that connects to the transmission, that has to be able to move a little bit to get it to adjust back. So after you get all that, tighten everything up, take a look at your fuel rail and you can see all the carbon built up on there. We're gonna carefully, carefully wipe it off. Stay away from the tip area in there. We're just gonna wipe all the gunk off the top area and set it back in. And we'll go ahead and connect all the connectors up and go ahead and change this valve cover out. All right, there's just a whole bunch of eight millimeter or five sixteen bolts around the perimeter. Use a deep well. Some in the middle and the valve cover will probably be stuck. So we pried on it just a little tiny bit on the edges and pop the seal, lift everything out and go ahead and replace the valve cover gasket. All right, we got the new valve cover gasket in and we got everything over here sprayed out. I mean, this looks amazing for almost a quarter million miles. It's got like 223 on the clock. I mean, almost no wear on the cam lobes. Everything looks great. We're gonna slap it back together, get everything buttoned up, put the coils back in, and we're gonna start it up and see what it sounds like. Should run a lot smoother now. All right, the only thing left to do now is to start it up and take it for a test drive and make sure that code is not coming back for that intake flap and make sure there's no oil leaking around the valve cover gasket anymore. We forgot to mention, right where the block joins on this side, and right on the back side by the timing chain cover over here, by the PCV valve, add a dot of RTV on each side because the block is two pieces there and it's a little bit uneven. You don't want anything to leak from there. So yeah, we'll go for a test drive, come back and see how it did.